It's your now host. So if anything else goes wrong, we can come to you. Uh, we're not going to bother with housekeeping. We're going to go straight to lovely Marissa Morales Hines. So Marissa, would you like to say hello to us? Hello, how are you guys doing? Um, it's a pleasure to be on the Shiny Network. So thank you. Um, my name is Marissa Morales Hines and I am a filmmaker, writer and poet. Um, I'm based in East London and um, I own Creative Until Death Studios. And we do uh, short films, um, drama and documentary, and we're currently um, diversifying and going into virtual reality. Um, so that's a little bit about me. So the reason we're talking to Marissa now is because Marissa is um, a new director. She submitted some work to um, Shiny, a, a short video which we're going to watch in a moment. Um, and it gets, as you probably all know, every video that's submitted gets reviewed by three organizations in our network. Uh, they also say what they think of it and they thought Marissa's video was wonderful. So as, uh, as one of the best reviewed videos, she is here as a co-host and she's going to be interviewing Ore and Jack um, in a little while. But first of all, uh, we're just going to hear a little bit more about Marissa because she's a director on the up. So, um, Marissa, when did you start directing? Sure. So I started around 2015. Um, I was I had just moved from New York and I had worked as a production assistant on Orange Is the New Black, and I knew that I wanted to kind of work uh, more in directing, but I didn't go to university, so I just took a couple of uh, courses at a community college um, in Virginia. And um, I remember one of the days that I was going to my course, I saw um, in the forest, because there's a lot of nature around here, some people like coming in and out of the forest and I saw like tents and tarp and things like that. So I was thinking maybe there was people living in there. And when I walked back at the end of the day, I saw there was a protest happening and it was basically um, to try and stop uh, the regentrification of that area. They were trying to cut down the forest and kick the um, people that were living in there out. And um, there was like a large homeless community. So I kind of just like got my phone and started interviewing people. And that turned into like a, a summer long uh, documentary process where I was talking to like council members, uh, the Dale City Civic Association um, and uh, the governor actually and I interviewed people that were living in that community and made a short film called Prince William County. And um, so that was kind of my entry into it. And after that, I just did a lot of um, little short films and documentaries and things. And most recently, I've done a documentary in South Korea about um, the Black diaspora there, interviewing young um, Black artists and teachers that live in Seoul and Busan and just asking it's kind of like a moving portrait series. Um, so yeah, it's a bit about that. So how old is this piece that we're going to see now, the in response piece? Um, two years old. Okay. Right. So um, and is in response in response isn't that first piece that you were talking about where you saw people in the woods and you were chatting because that yeah. right. So yeah. this is something that you went on to make after that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And is it funded? Yeah, so basically, um, so I moved to the UK in 2017, and I was part of a, it was called, a, it was like a Erasmus Plus program, so it was a, a cross-cultural program, and so as part of it, I was helping to teach Turkish young people, like children and teenagers, how to film, but also they let um, us, like the emerging filmmakers, make our own pieces as well, and I had written a poem about Alan Kurdi and his death from before, and when I realized where we were going in Turkey was the same place that his body was found, I decided that I wanted to reconstruct the poem and make a piece about, um, about him. Okay. And so I ended up meeting some really good collaborators and then that's how we made the piece. But really it cost us 50 pounds to make it because we had all of our equipment. Um, we met Syrian refugees actually randomly and we were able to feature them in the film. And, um, and yeah, so everything was kind of just made with what we had. Um, so yeah. Okay, so for you, um, uh, even though you didn't necessarily need the funding from Erasmus, just being part of a training organization and being in that headspace is all the stuff that helped you get to get, uh, bring it together to make this film. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so let us, I'm going to switch over to um, your film now. Um, Alex, I'm going to do this because uh, everything seems to be working. Oh, uh, you need to, uh, dis you need to enable screen sharing if you would and then uh, if while you're doing that I'll just ask you one more question Marissa um uh what's the reception been like where else have you put it apart from Shining? Sure so it was screened at the DACA International Film Festival um last year in the it was in the women filmmaker section and I've had it screened in uh, Peckham Shorts and with a few other small film production um like festivals and stuff like that um, but mostly it's just been sharing it within the communities that like I work in. So I do a lot of uh, work with young filmmakers in Brixton and in um, with the Barbican and stuff like that in City of London. So I screen it in kind of cultural settings like museums and galleries and things like that. But now I'm trying to get it more into the festival circuit um, because I realized people really liked it because for me it was just more of just a piece of art. I didn't really know how people were going to respond to it. but. I'm getting a lot of good feedback, so um, I'm going to be sending it out to festivals in my own. Okay, nice one. So, um, uh, would everyone like to have a look at the link that will be in chat now? Because I'll play this through Zoom for the people that, uh, that can't open up another browser window. If you can open other, up another browser window, definitely do it. Mute Zoom, because uh, Zoom is dreadful at um, playing video as I'm afraid we're about to find out. And it's a lovely film. If you play it in your browser window instead, you'll get a much better experience. Okay, so off we go. Ölen insanlar var söyleyelim. Ölen insanlar var. Kaçmaya ve kalmaya çalışan insanlar. Memleketlerini korumak için hayatları veren insanlar. Ölen insanlar var. Çünkü hastane yok onlar için. Çünkü sermaye yok onlar için. Onlar için sadece insan sabah araçları var. İnsanlar ölüyor. Çünkü onların ölmesi isteyen hükümetler var. İnsanlar ölüyor. Yüzlerce milyar. Denizleri aşmaya çalışan bebeklerin cesetleri, dergilerin kapaklarını süslesinler. Küçük çocuklar mesela alan Bodrum'un kıyısında uzanmışlar. O kıyıda yürüyormuşum ve merak ediyorum. Hissediyorlar muslarda oynayan yaşıkları. Onun bu sürüye dönülmüş. Onun bu sıcak havada, sıcak kumları buza döndüren, kıyıya demir atmış hayaletini. Onun mağlubiyetini kıyıya vurduran dalgalar, onu düşündükçe, daha da sertleşiyor şimdi. Şimdi herkes gülüyor bu kıyıda. Hiçbir kuş şarkı söylüyor. Şimdi burada gökyüzü her zaman asılı kalacak. Suya başımı daldırdığında bileceğim ki bu tuzlu tat onun gözyaşlarını alıyor. Ben o suyu tükürmekten korkuyorum. Havaya karışan bu korku güneş yanığı gibi vücuduma yapışıyor. Tanrı'dan dileyebilsem denizde yüzen bayat bir ekme ulaşmaya çalışan bir balık gibi uzanıp bu küçük çocuğun eline onu artık çok uzaklardaki evine geri götürmüş.
Right, so very sad film there. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's really deep um, right now. <laughs> uh, Jack, is uh, we'll just come to you and Ore um, just to see what if you want to say anything about that. If you want to ask uh, Marissa anything. It was a great film. Um, I suppose I didn't hear what you said the inspiration was for the film. Sure. Um, so I. I lost um, a stepbrother when I was a teenager and he drowned um, and it really touched me. And so when I saw Alan Kurdi on the front of a magazine um, a few years ago, five years ago, I was really moved. So I wrote a poem and it was called In Response to the Boy on the Shore. And the poem was published in like an anthology about war and peace. And when I saw the um, opportunity to go to Turkey, I wanted to do something around that poem. And when I found out that we're going to the same place where his body was found, I realized that I had to like reconstruct it and do something as like powerful as I could. And um, so that's when um, we decided to make it. But in the editing process, I thought that I wanted it to actually be in Turkish. So me and my DOP who was living with some Turkish artists at the time um, decided to translate it. So we worked really hard on translating the poem and we also got like different different like ages of uh, people from Turkey to do the audio. So we were able to get a child to speak in some of the, um, the verses if you were able to hear and then older people so we can kind of get all the voices of refugees that, you know, um, have experienced this. Marissa, so. I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm going to wrap this bit up because um, oh, yeah. we're beginning to uh, leak over a bit too much. But uh, thank you so much. Um, and you're going to stay around because you're going to be asking some questions in a bit. Sure. Thank you. Um, okay, Ore, we're, go we're going to come to you first. So first of all, who are you? What do you do? Okay, uh, my name's Ori. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm sort of a freelance commissioner and I'm a producer um, working for Knucklehead. So I kind of wear two hats. Um, that's me. <laughs> I've been a bit misleading before. I was saying I was implying that you were the main commissioner at, at Polydor, but you're I'm, not. But it's one of the jobs that you have. Isn't I'm it? certainly not that. I'm a freelance producer, um, sorry, commissioner who works for different clients. Polydor just happens to be one of the clients I work for. But yeah, uh, you, I got in trouble there, Caroline. <laughs> sorry, I think Samira can't perhaps. <laughs> Who is the main commissioner at Polydor? Samira, yeah. And she's yeah, been very kind to me and sort of given me lots of opportunities. So. She's, fun, she's a phenomenal commissioner as well. She very, she is, yeah. yeah. So, um, so as we will hear, Ore went on to commission Jack, a blind eye, who we're coming on to. But Ore, first of all, uh, set the scene for us. We're talking about a particular commission here. Um, who was the artist? How did the brief come to you? What was the brief? So the brief came to the, basically the artist is a guy called Declan, who's an Essex boy. Um, the brief came to me before um, the lockdown. Um, so it was a completely, you know, different set of rules. We we're looking for something completely different. Um, then lockdown came and everybody disappeared on me for about a week. And then they came back and went, why don't we just try and do this? And it was right before we had the wave of lockdown videos. Um, so the brief completely changed, new set of rules, and it was right at the beginning of the process. So we went out and sort of found a director that was up for it, and Jack so of Blind Eye was. Let me just pull you back a bit. Um, so the, the brief particularly was, Declan's got this uh, new track coming out, and was there a kind of, he's looking for a, the, the, the vibe or a blah, blah, blah? Honestly? Yeah. No. <laughs> the, the, the, the brief was, how do you make a music video when we can't go to the artist and film them? Was, okay. um, you know, take the title of the song as, as you know, as a, as a starting point. But, you know, it was right at the beginning of the process. So as you can imagine, it was, you know, right at the beginning, everyone's head was just in the, the whiz. We don't know what to do. So it was kind of like, how do we make it? And luckily Jack was up for it. And he kind of, it's quite strange because Jack straight away kind of understood what he had to do because he'd done some live stuff. He had a system that worked. Hang on yeah. one Sorry. Are you allowed to say what the budget was? Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come on. Uh, I I, um, but it, it wasn't enough. 
Right, okay. But is it ever? Uh, yeah. uh, how many people did you ask to treat on it? And why did you go to Jack? Why I personally only like going, I like only getting six treatments in. Okay. okay. So if I'm fortunate enough that I can do that, then it's great. I don't, you know, sometimes you go to more people and there's a whole big thing about that in the industry about how many um, directors, commissioners go to and you know, I'm going to sit on the fence on that one. I think you need to get the idea. So, you know, sometimes you, you'll go out to three, you'll go out to four, sometimes you go out to 10 because you just need to get the idea. Um, but yeah, my rule of thumb is six ideas I like to get. Okay. And why um, was Jack on your, on your list of people? Well, I've worked with Jack before and I know when we, look, Jack's great, Brian are great. I've done a couple of videos with them. They've always been quite techie videos. And yeah, everyone that, work, everyone that I've worked with at, I just seem they're, they're on it and they, they get the tech side of it as well and that's so this, you this tech was going to be quite important for this well yeah 100 percent. i mean we couldn't you can't be in the same space as your artist yeah i mean it's, you know if you just said that to somebody six months ago oh we're going to make videos and you're not allowed in the same room as the artist everyone would have gone you're mad <laughs> and that, that reality became a reality so yeah um so um jack I'm going to bring up your hello. Um, I'm going to bring up your um, your treatment because you have very kindly said that we can do that. Um, do you want to? If I bring that up now, share screen, desktop. Yes, everything's working. The raw, go away, go away, go away. And do you want to talk us through? If I just scroll down. Uh, talk yeah, why not? Good. So yeah, like already said, it kind of came from, I, I never saw the original brief, so I don't know what it changed from, but I remember when it came to us, it was like, okay, we want to make the video, we want to make a video that we couldn't normally make. Um, you know, we try to make a video, let's show something that what should have been and kind of take a bit of a lighthearted spin on that and keep it all quite tongue in cheek. Um, so we started, I think it was Young, was it Young Thug, Ori, the reference? That was the Young Thug video that, the yeah, artist didn't with, with turn the, up, which was great. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's it. And he, he had, I think, throughout that Young Thug video, there was um, we were it's sort of like speaking to the audience with slates, with title slates. So we were like, okay, we want, we know we want that to be like the backbone of the thing where we set up this situation where we were about to make this video. We had it all storyboarded. We were going, a, a, a, and I guess the tongue in cheek element was is a video that we never would have made anyway. You know, we we had, we were storyboarding flying to see the pyramids and traveling around the world. It's like, we wouldn't have done that anyway. So that's kind of a joke, but we couldn't do it. So now let's Declan, we've sent Declan the storyboard and almost the gag is Declan thought, right, I'll make it myself. And anyway, I'll make it myself at home. I'll put up a green screen in my living room and I'll do my best. Jack, so we, Jack yeah. the screen that we're on now that says the Jonah Hill Palace ad. Yeah. Uh, that one, cause I don't know that one. So that kind of, that was kind of to try and give, um, to show how we wanted the green screen to be almost purposefully naff. Like we wanted to pick really cheesy footage and we want it to be wrong and we didn't want it to match up all the time. So on, the, on this palace advert, they've got Jonah Hill and he's like, he's clearly not in this skate shop. The green, sc the green screen is done so badly. Like he's giving one of the guys a high five and they like, totally miss each other and he's walking on the spot and, and then like the, rather than walking in, he's kind of being, the transition and the glide looks bad. So we wanted to add that in as, as well to show that like, maybe Declan has made this himself. And if he, you know, when he's stroking the tiger, whatever, he's not quite touching it. Or when he's trying to touch the leaning tower of Pisa, he's nowhere near it. So it was kind of just adding that humor to it in that way as well. I see Ed Sheeran uh, popping up quite a lot in your, um, in the uh, images you've used. There he is again. Yeah, they did that one with the Bieber video. They did um, they did a lot of green screen bits in that, which again was daft. And we kind of wanted to just sell in that that tone of voice. Yeah. Uh, so that was a good reference for those bits. So just looking at the way you've constructed this uh, treatment, it's really nice because all your uh, copy, all your text is uh, is on the green screen. So that's really ramming it home, isn't it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> you've got lots of lovely examples of, uh, so it's, it must have been very clear to you, Ori, exactly what they were aiming for. Yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of back and forth, but yeah, it was, I mean, you can't get any clearer than this. So what was yeah. the back and forth then? Um, I think we le we lent away a little bit from the, the storyboard bit, all right, didn't we? And I think the practical bit, like uh, looking back at this treatment, now oh, there's the COVID bit. <laughs> um, 
looking back at this at the treatment we i think initially we were going to do more maybe in camera practical bits but as soon as we started to explore the what stock footage was available in the green screen it just felt like that was enough to sell to sell it all in to sell the joke and and for it to work it was, it was almost getting a bit messy with the practical bits like we thought about having dummies and and Declan maybe dressing up as the girl um but we sort of quickly steered away from that already didn't we yeah we did and tone as well it was you know it was it was a lot of it was about come on it was a really serious you know moment in history with the covid thing so we were just right. sort of just making sure that it, we weren't sort of making a joke of the scenario and it was you know it was a bit insincere and a bit mm -hmm. you know, a bit not nice but can yeah. i ask um uh jack carrie sutton is your rep isn't she and she's a really well respected rep did she have yeah ever she's brilliant yeah. we love carrie she did absolutely yes yeah. so it came or we would have put it out to carrie and then carrie uh came to us knowing like i said that we've worked with aria before um so yeah it came through carrie initially from our own so um, the point of you working with Carrie is be because she uh, is having closer conversations with Ari on the, more often than you are. Yeah, that's right. And, and all commissioners across the board, you know, and she, she'll know one that might suit. So she's obviously seeing this. And, and as Ari said, maybe it would a tech perspective or uh, that we've also done stuff together before. So it, she obviously thought we'd be a good match. Okay, great. Right, well, at that point, um, I think I'll stop sharing that um, and start sharing the uh, video so that we can see now everyone's had a good look at what you've got in the treatment, because like you say, there is a little bit more in that treatment than actually what turned mm. up. Um, let's have a look at the video. Uh, once again, Alex is going to put up a link in chat so that you can play it in your own browsers, because it's such a better experience if you do that. Uh, Otherwise, you're going to have to watch it with me in Zoom, I'm afraid. Uh, but hey. Oh. There we go. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm going to make I'm going to make that last little bit go again. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. Right. Sorry, my mouse is playing up again. I'm just turning it on and turning it off. Um, so, Jack, yeah. Yeah, it's bonkers, Array, isn't it? Tell us what you uh, tell us what you uh, thought of that. How different was the um, rough cut? Oh, that's different, actually. At all. Oh. Um, yeah, I mean, I kind of I've got I've, with my two hats on. When you do a video like this or anything post, you know, you've got to all your live action stuff has to be signed off. Because right. it's very difficult, because basically you're shooting for specific scenes. Yeah. So if, you know, if, for example, when he's flying in the air, someone goes, oh, I want him to be lying in bed. You obviously can't do that once you've shot it. So, yeah. so what we tried to do is come up with an, well, I made them come up with an animatic. <laughs> um, and I was quite, like, I was a bit annoying about that, but I was like, look, you need to give me an animatic. This is close. To so you basically shot the video, but with somebody else in all of those shots uh -huh. and then you know myself and the label we signed that off yeah. so that there was not there wasn't that much changes after there were a few things we did but i would say that it was 90 percent the same uh how long did it take you to um do that jack to uh to... so isn't it is it, i don't know what an animatic is and is an animatic everything but the real thing basically it's like a yeah it's like a video storyboard isn't it yeah, yeah uh, and i've got to give a shout out to blind eyes james did and he, he pretty much co-directed this with me because he did the animatic so there's a version of this that exists with james's head <laughs> instead yeah. of declan because like i already said we we had to pretty much we had to know what we were shooting before and then lock all that stock footage down so that when we got into shooting with uh with deck we knew exactly what angle exactly what framing because we knew cause we actually had live composite and being streamed as we did it so we could see it match up but we needed to have selected those bits afterwards because yeah there was no wouldn't change that afterwards if suddenly we wanted him doing something else we wouldn't have him in that position if, if anyone wants to come in with questions about this about live compositing and things like that which are things that i don't really know enough about well this was all this was all about. this was all 2d and not 3d so we had to make sure that the artist was exactly in the right position for every shot 
and normally you would do this with a mix and overlay so normally you would have a monitor and you'd be playing your footage in the background and you'd be positioning your your subject in the right position but because we couldn't be anywhere near him we were doing this through a laptop which is just it's just <laughs> now i say it, it just seems a bit daft and it's a recipe for disaster but it actually worked out fine <laughs> this, this kind of process you're gonna have to i suppose yeah, um, do you I mean, want to ask a question? Oh, sorry. Yes, Marissa, go in and ask a question. I had to. So I wanted to know: is was live compositing a large portion of the budget? And then did it was it like a regular twelve hours for the shoot, or because the back and forth it was it longer? It was uh, for the first part of that question. It wasn't really. It didn't add much on in terms of cost. It was all part of the same stream. So we had the one feed, like I think we did it in Google Hangout actually, and then it was just like we were able to share one screen which had the compositing on one screen which was like the actual camera shot and then one screen which was like a behind the scenes thing that we could we could see deck he could speak to words and everyone else could kind of dive in so it didn't once you'd got that workflow sorted i mean there was a lot of different programs and gadgets or whatever but once it was there it was pretty set um and for the second part we we we knew it would probably take, well, it w was going to take longer because it was literally deck on set and some of his households who were, were great and really helped us out. But we thought we're going to have to do this across two days. So I think we picked a weekend actually and did 10 hours in a hangout on a Saturday and 10 hours in a hangout on Sunday and, and did it that way. Um, I'm just going to stop you and play this last little form three minutes oh, or so. It'll probably work out. Oh, ah! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> um, while we're on share, I'm going to just bring these up and then uh, Jack, you can talk about these. So let's make yep. full screen. So here we are. Go on, that's you on your Google Hangouts, isn't it? Uh, I can't it? see it yet. If you... you can't. Oh, sorry. No, that's all right. Uh, okay, so uh, carry on and I'll just get these up while you're talking. Um, so yeah, that was that was the time, and it took two days because there was a lot of stuff to get through as well. Oh, here we go. I can see it now. <laughs> yeah, now I am same background. <laughs> um, so as you can see, that that's kind of how the screen split. You, you know, you can see the participants at the bottom there. And we kind of had that top left one, and it was rough, obviously, you know, but it, just to get the size and the positioning and the clearance and stuff. Then underneath that, you can almost see the behind the scenes one, which we recorded at times as well because we thought, and we ended up did did in that very last kind of shot of the film we might cut to the behind the scenes thing again just to sh just to show how mad it is that he's trying to do all this on his living room with a green screen and then we had the feed from the camera top right and then underneath it was the it was the crew so we could see us there and we could chat and so that was the setup yeah that was us for 20 hours <laughs> and there's some more in a plane in egypt and there's james <laughs> Uh, so well, you can see, if you look at that bottom right one, there, there's the there's one of the test shots. So there's James swimming with the shark. <laughs> <laughs> it was good fun. It was great. You know, it, I, there, there was certain, like I think we said to Ori, it was almost a video that you you'd you'd like to make regardless of the situation. You know, it was good fun, uh, and it certainly had its pros. You know, there was no early morning commute or seven a.m. call time. It was. <laughs> So, yeah, good fun, yeah. all right. Um, what did the artist think of it? How um, did did you have to do uh, many notes on it? Did you have to go back much to Jack about this? No. To be fair, he was. We couldn't have asked for a more sort of forward and up for it character. He was really up for it. He enjoyed it. He took it for what it was. He didn't take himself too seriously. Yeah. From that, I mean, I've I've done things a lot less. Um, I mean, that wasn't even that stressful, but a lot less stressful than that, and the artists have gone absolutely mad. But in his respect, he was just down for it. And he was, he was quite ill as well. But he kind of just said, look, I'm up for this. I want to make a video. And it was quite exciting because it was at the beginning of the, the lockdown. So, you know, it was, we were just trying to figure things out. It was fun, you know. Just going back to um, a question I remember from, uh, from a long time ago. A lot of people sometimes, it happens frequently that somebody will say, they made that bloody video and that was my idea and my treatment. I guess when you briefed for this, everyone must have treated fairly similarly. Is, it, is that the case? And, uh, it was, and it was right at the beginning. 
I mean, when, when the idea came in, there was a couple of videos that came out that were, had the same sort of premise in the sense that it was getting people to film themselves. But um, I feel like we were, right, we were right at the beginning of it, this one was. After this, there was loads of videos that were sort of in this space, but yeah. yeah. There's not much you can do if you can't go to the artist. It's, <laughs> the, the trick is to see how creative you can be in that box, isn't it? Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, oh. How long did the video take to edit and get signed off? Um, was it a couple of weeks turnaround, I think? Something like that. Um, it was on time. It wasn't late, was it? If I remember correctly. Never, never is, alright now, mate. Always on time. <laughs> yeah, it was on time, yeah. Excellent. Um, we had... Uh, someone wants to sell, I'll, I'll tie these two things in together. Someone has asked uh, how they can catch your attention, Ore, as a director. And uh, someone else has asked, uh, are they better trying to uh, uh, make connections with label commissioners or are they better going through uh, commissioning platforms like um, the one that I used to run or and sold, um, which is Radar, or, or um, Creative Commission? That's a really tricky question, isn't it? Because okay. um, you can send as many emails as you want to as many commissioners as you want. Um, but if the work's not good, you know, you're not really going to get the response you would hope for. Um, but also the flip to that is, is that they're in, inundated with, you know, everyone's inundated with emails of everyone asking, you know, I remember when I was trying to get, and I was, you know, emailing people all the time. I think I, there's no, there's no answer to that. There's this, you have to just, just hustle and yeah. make stuff, get it on promo news, you know, save it, send it to Dave Knight, yeah. send it to production companies. Um, you so, know, labels are always looking for fresh talent, always. Um, but I feel like if you're going to go to a commissioner and say, look at me, give me a chance. You just, your work's just got to be good and you have to be realistic and yeah. you have to be quite self-aware and look at what everyone else is making and just be self-aware because what's going to happen is if it's not very good, then you're not going to get the response you want and then you're going to get disheartened or whatever. And it's, yeah. I know that sounds quite harsh, but I just really feel, I, my personal thing is people have to be really self, try and be self as where as they can be and be super critical of their own work. And that's in any creative space. You know, you might think it's good, but you have to really sort of separate yourself from the, the ego and find out if, you know, if it is good. Sorry. Yeah, no, fantastic. Uh, I was just going to say as well that we are going to do um, a special, we're going to do, start doing masterclasses um, in September on how to um, do exactly this kind of thing because people are always interested in this question and you can go on forever. So I am now going to draw that little bit to a close. Thank you so much, Jack and Ore and Marissa. Uh, and we're going to go on to the next bit, which is called Opportunity Knocks. And Juliet from The Nerve is, as our lovely sponsor, is going to read out our Opportunity Knock. So these are lots of lovely things for, well, some lovely things for directors off we go. Can everyone see that pink screen? Jack, can you see it? Yeah, brilliant. Right, Julia, over to you. Oh, I can't hear you, Juliet. Just... Yeah, that'd be better if I, uh, if I unmute myself. I'm saying I'm really <laughs> proud of the fact. I'm proud of the fact that I can read. I can read something. <laughs> And sponsor the the shiny show, and actually that was really brilliant. And uh, yeah, congratulations on that green screen. I'm impressed. In a former life, I used to work on the uh, Rory Bremner show very many moons ago, and we spent hours doing green screen in edits. And I know when you're doing it as manually as you as you've just done it, it's really hard. So so well done. So here we go. Yes, yeah, so opportunity knocks. So there's some great stuff uh, on offer here. Um, company called Cheat, they're the award-winning colour grading and finishing studio in East London. They're offering something called Cheat Looks, and that's a kind of free pre-production pre-grade to set the look of your shoot and post. So look into that. The details will be in chat. Yeah, in the chat. There they are. Um, and Black Lives Matter, um, here's two resources to help you crew more people of colour. Um, and both are worldwide resources. One is 
sporas.com and the other is hireblackcreatives.com. And co. Uh, sorry, yes. dot co. It's a dot co. You're interrupting the sponsor. You're not meant to do yeah, that. Sorry. <laughs> my little moment <laughs> <laughs> and then netflix uk have a call out for pictures so get them in that sounds good to me um and that's it so that's the end of my um my little little bit lovely thank you very much julia right and uh okay and stop sharing i think we've done that yeah so now we're going to do um alex do you want to make me the host Yes, do. because once that happens, we're going to do the breakout rooms, which is the last bit of um, today. So everyone that's here is going to get automatically sent into a breakout room um, and uh, just chat to people while you're there. It's a it's a laid back bit of networking up to you, what you say, what you talk about. If you don't like it, if it's not your thing, there's a little box in the bottom that says uh, leave room. And if you do that, you'll come back to here. Okay, so is everybody ready? Uh, we're going to put uh, 81 participants into 21 rooms. Off we go. Ta da! Oh, you have to join it. Hi, Caroline. Can you hear me? Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. I, I think my lovely participant has bailed in my breakout room, so I don't know if I can be reassigned, but I, I, I can assign you. If you so uh, I've got Andy Sowerby to assign. Let me just assign. Assign to that room two. Okay, so unassigned. Just Put in wait at no, I don't want to put you in the waiting room. Oh, uh, have you got any options to click it to join a room of any kind, even if it's uh, even if you're on your own in there? Yeah, join uh, room 21. 
All right, I'll go down to room 21 and brilliant. And then I'll find you there and rip, put you somewhere. Brilliant, Caroline, thank you. Thank you. Oh. If there's anyone here who wants to say anything, I'm just, just making sure that everyone's got someone to talk to. So if you're just here in the main room again, come here if you want to chat. Hello, James Green. Hello. Hi, sorry. Yeah, I, this is just in work hours, so I'm kind of listening in the background whilst doing other things. That's why I had to leave, unfortunately. Nice to see you. It's lovely to see you too. How have you been? I've been very well, thank you. Um, apart from uh, not powering my mouse before the event. So, oh, no. Oh, my God. Lots of frozen screens. It happens to the best of us. Yes. Well, I'm an idiot. Uh, <laughs> I won't do it again. Exactly. There you go. Trial by fire. Yeah. So now then, I think people have been in there seven minutes. So uh, I haven't done breakout rooms before. Have you ever been in a breakout room? No, I, I can't say I have. Okay. Oh, now then, what I wanted to ask you, uh, what did you think of, uh, tell me what worked and what didn't work. What was, there was, there was too much fluffing, wasn't there? Um, I I don't, yeah, I think, um, I think it worked pretty smoothly, obviously. Um, yeah, I think it's just unfortunate that Zoom can't really handle video playback, but. Like you said, if everyone just watches the links that you've sent, then that's, that kind of solves that problem. Yeah. What did you reckon to the um, uh, Declan Donnelly um, background uh, story? Oh, it was great. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, it was, it was really good to hear. Yeah, I think those stories are fabulous. So we're going to do loads of those. Oh, really? Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I think that's really insightful. So that was good. Totally good. I'm going to close all rooms now because people are beginning to come out. So that'll be, yeah. So I can see Jane White there and Bertie. Hello. You can unmute yourself if you like. Yeah, we, we, uh, we were in a room with Philip, who we work with. I saw that. <laughs> I spirited him away halfway through. You could see, could you? <laughs> um, and Obi, which was nice. Oh, good. Yeah, that's quite an interesting thing. When, you, when the breakout rooms happen, uh, you have to go through them all and keep and make sure that no one's in there on their own. Because obviously there's not a lot of point in being in a breakout room on your own. Not everyone wants to join one, a breakout room. It was good. I've not done it before. Yeah. I, that, it works. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Mine was like going to prom. I was there alone. Someone popped in. I said, hello. They left. <laughs> someone else popped in. I said, hello. They left. And yeah, it was like reliving high school. <laughs> Oh, I think I think uh, like many things online, you have to try not to take it too personally. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Um, uh, right. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for coming. There is going to be another shiny show in July. It's on the 22nd. It is a director's showcase. So it's not this format. We're going to take three directors videos whose work the network really loves so you'll see the process on the website so check that out come along it's going to be very chatty and informal but better 
uh, and more expertly run by the host. Uh, and then we're taking a break in, or in August and then we're back on a weekly basis in September. We'll do a lot more inside commissioning stories. So there'll be inside music video commissioning, inside branded content, inside all kinds of different commissioning stories. So thank you so much for coming. Um, if you'd like to tell us anything, good, bad, whatever, drop me a line, Caroline at Shiny Network. Uh, it's always lovely to hear from people. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. That was great. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you fix Thanks. the Netflix, the Netflix link because it's broken? Oh, has it? It doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't it? That would be brilliant. Just to you know what, I never checked it to make sure that it would work. Um, I'm sure it's very good. Anyway, do a UK Netflix call for pictures because I've seen I've seen uh, that that is advertised in a few places. I don't I don't remember where. Uh, just see if I've got a good link or not. Yeah, it is a good link. Okay. How do I get it from there to here? Alex, could you try putting it up again if you're still here? I just posted it in there. No. Oh, have you? Oh, thank you. Right. Oh, you star. Thank you. That's working. Now. Yeah. Thanks a lot, DJ. That's very nice of you. Have you pitched on it yet? I haven't. No, I haven't. Someone you WhatsApp to me. You want? Someone WhatsApped it um, over to me. But, um, okay. I, yeah. I guess with these things, it's like you see them, but it's like you just have to get on them straight away. That's, that's yeah. Otherwise, it's yeah. Because like, they're not making any secret out of it, are they? So loads of people are, uh, are going to be in there, but. Got to get in to win. Thanks again. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Right, so I'm going. I'm going to go now. So thanks a lot, everyone. Bye. Thank thanks a lot. Bye.